Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to fly the Mooney M20 Ovation. Now the uh, Mooney is an interesting airplane. The people who developed it said, we want to go fast. And they said, well how tall are you? Oh, I'm four foot three. Sure. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to be using this uh, great checklist that I was actually able to track down. It's called the uh, Mooney Ovation. I'll go ahead and call it up on the screen here. Mooney Ovation M20R Carinado uh, Beginner's Guide. Uh, this is a really, really slick uh, checklist. Clearly the person who built it uh, probably had a little bit of experience with the aircraft maybe in the real world because there's a lot of really really good detail in this and uh, if you want to track that one down feel free to poke around on Google. It will not take you long to grab this one. So uh, we're going to be using this today as well as a little bit of experience. Now when it comes to the Mooney, um, the only experience in Mooney I have is actually in an older version, the J version. Uh, the J version of course is uh, just very very similar to this one in that when you lie down you're like you feel like this in the plane because it is such a tiny plane. You're like I, I want to see a the window but if you looked up you'd actually smack your head on the ceiling like you said this is such a tiny plane look at how low to the ground the wing is like one of the things you always have to do is go under like check fuel like yeah you try getting underneath that thing but that being said this is a very high performance plane and it works great actually it's not a high performance plane it's a complex plane but that's okay so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we just go right up down the top and make our way in payload oh, looks good oh whoa 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 no 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 i'm a little lighter than that of course, uh, what they don't tell you is they also carry about 15 pounds worth of junk that I always stick in the back. Junk in the trunk. All right, aircraft documents are checked. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. That's a flight simulator. In the aircraft, I usually fly. Uh, we keep it down here in this little bag. Oh, somebody's already got a tablet in it. <gasps> Does it work? Oh, I forgot it works in this version. But yeah, you can actually see all the different modes here, opening doors and things like that. You can also turn in the GTN 750, which, heck yeah, I'm going to use that because that's fantastic. And of course, you have a couple startup options. Again, this is a Carinado thing. This is not something that you're going to get in the real plane. But like I said, I'm just going to take advantage of it while it's here. Can press done. Oh, you want me to go back? Well, that's the problem when you do things. Is as soon as you touch them, now they're stuck for there forever. Oh, well, we're going to have to deal with that a little later. Huh. Well, that was fun. Uh, the trick is uh, click ready for taxi and then go and you're all set. All right, so let's go through it. Uh, parking brake set. Now, first things first in this one, there's a little tiny plane. You have these little handles down here and uh, they're so annoying in the real world because you don't know which one you're grabbing. Well, we're going to pull that parking brake out and make sure it's in the correct position. We're going to make sure our magneto and starter switches are in the off position. All right, we got all the switches over here. Uh, we had a little bit of fun with that a minute ago. We're going to make sure that's in the off position. We're going to click on our master switch. I love the instrumentation here. They make it so simple for us as far as that goes. So we're going to go through and we're just going to make sure all the switches make sense here. Looking down the side. That looks good. That looks good. I love the standby back. That's an archer thing or a uh, piper thing too that they have a lot. Looking around, looking around, checking my switches. you got to go above your head too because you've got a bunch more here. Oh, looks like we've got a couple extra switches. I'll make sure those are off, 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 off. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Exterior lights. Uh, one thing that we do in the real world is we go and then go outside and check real quick to make sure everything looks okay. The big thing for us, though, is just going through to make sure we're carrying enough fuel, which apparently somehow we've already burnt a tiny bit of gas in the left tank. I don't know how I did that. I'm just, I don't know. I just didn't fill it up all the way when I was loading it in. Also a good time to go ahead and check your oxygen if you intend to use oxygen on this thing. Uh, we have plenty. Uh, we have you know, 1,500 PSI. Obviously got the little switch there if we intend to go real, real high because it is a high performance. Uh, not it, Actually, no, this one is high performance. I take back my earlier statement. So next what we're going to do is we're going to confirm our circuit breakers are in. Looks good. We're going to go ahead and make sure our fuel quantity is all set, which we checked. We're going to make sure the oxygen, we got all that. Our windows are nice and clean. Good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pop out the uh, master switch. And in the real world, of course, is the part when you run around and uh, check everything. You go underneath, you sample the fuel. You go, hey, doesn't that tail have the same tail for all parts of the tail? And I'm like, shh. <laughs> the old one's dead, not anymore. So then we come back down and we're ready to go. So first thing goes first, so we're going to make sure our landing gear lever is in the down position. You don't want it to do that. You want it to be nice and down like that. You have to get this little tug to actually get it down. Passengers get on board. We brief them. We go through the door. We do all that stuff. Magneto can start a switch. We make sure that's off. Master switch off. Alternator off. Master switch out. Food bump punch off. Uh, circuit breakers in. ELT switch is going to be in the armed position, which is what it is. I'm not worried about it too much. Rocker off. Alternate circuit is off. Well, let's see. Defrost. Cabin heat. Throttle. Closed. Now propeller comes full forward. We're going to make sure that's set correctly. And we're going to make sure mixture is pulled all the way out, which it is. Flap switch is going to be in the up position. I hate the flap switch on this thing. It's a press and hold in the real plane. On this one, it's a click click which is nice, but like I said, it doesn't work that way. Fuel selector, we're going to pick the biggest tank, uh, which in this case would now be our right tank, uh, because now, uh, like I said, we use a millimeter of uh, stuff in there. Obviously, you don't use a millimeter of fluids, but eh, deal with it. Red emergency leads, I'm not going to worry about that. All right, let's do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the throttle, and we're going to push it all the way forward. Huh? We're going to set the propeller to full forward. We're going to take the mixture handle, and we're going to put it to full rich. 
You're going, oh no, it's fuel ejected, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flick on some switches here. Master switch is gonna come on. We're gonna flip on the bacon switch, which is the above our head, rotational beacon. I mean, it's bacon, so you just put an A in there and you'll be good to go, kind of thing like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the nav lights. We're gonna flick those suckers on. In the US, you're only supposed to use those at night. I mean, you can use them any time, but you're supposed to put them on at night. We can also go ahead and test the enunciators if we want, but I'm looking at them and they're looking pretty darn good. So I'm not so, so worried about it. If you needed to, you can reach up here and go, bam, and all the lights get all angry at you and you know exactly what you've done. What have you done? So what we're going to do now is we're going to set the fuel boost pump on. So we're going to go click. And as soon as you do that, you should be getting some fuel pressure. This is how we uh, prime, by the way, in this particular one. So that's good. So that's working perfectly fine. That looks good. Looks good. All set. We're getting 14.6 gallons per hour. Is that actually that much? Because we're not actually burning any of it. Don't worry about it too much. So what we do now is that's how we prime our engine. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pull the throttle all the way to idle. We're going to look out the window and say, clear prop. Clear prop. Ah. Of course, my co-pilot who flies with me would look at me and go, clear right, and he'd be like, cool. So now we're going to look outside, we're going to put our hands on the key, and we're going to go ahead and give that a bit of a crank here. So let's go ahead and see what it does. One, two, three, and wrap. Sweet. Just a little bit. There it goes. We're going to about 1,050 RPM. Excellent. So now we want to check for the green stuff immediately. We've got oil pressure, which is good. Oil temperature, which is climbing. This should be low. This should be low. That's fine. Obviously, this is going to be low. We have plenty of vacuum, which is excellent. We're also showing a positive number here under VDC amp. That means our alternator is working. Oh, this we're not going on. I would say don't fly today because um, that's not going to work. You can also see our um, electrical system has 25 volts, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Fuel flow indicator, we're going to check. This is a good time to reset that if you have one of those. I'm not worried about it too much because it started at zero today. So like I said, I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to push the throttle forward a little bit, and we're going to try to get right around 1,000 revolutions per minute, comrades. We're just going to be eh, about right there. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be darn close. So then what you're supposed to do is adjust the mixture for smooth operation. I don't think we're having an issue with that. But what we will do is we'll confirm that our boost pump is off. But we no longer need it because, like I said, we got this started. And it's always a good idea to double check to make sure this number doesn't drop to zero, in which case we've got bigger problems. <laughs> so now our engine's uh, ready and it's uh, starting the warm up process. But we're not going to worry about it too, too much at this time. This would be a great time, of course, to go running around, making sure everything is uh, fine, you know, kind of making your last ditch uh, agreements and adjustments and all that other good stuff. So while that's going, we're going to go ahead and uh, flip on our avionics switch here. It's our radio master. Get this process going. I'm using the GTN. 750 here because it is fantastic oh, we have one of these in the 182 i like to fly they're <laughs> they're just easy to use so what we'll do today is we'll fly over to bdr which isn't too too far from here press that one select that one kbdr which should be a pretty darn short flight for us uh, 26 nautical miles sounds good switch the cdi to gps delightful there's also a switch up here if you need to do that kind of a thing the one thing that this does not do is this is an old school hsi so you have to actually read over dkk and punch it into here Otherwise, you're gonna be very, very, very confused when you try to center that needle. So uh, right now, as you probably said, it said pick 90 degrees for the DTK. So I'm just gonna set this to 90 degrees, just like that. Perfect. So now the DTK, which is desired track, agrees with this, which tells me I need to turn to the right to get to my destination today. Everything else is all set, so uh, we're pretty much ready to go. This one's, like I said, very, very simple. Radio master switch. Uh, in the real world, we'd be checking ATIS and everything along those lines. We'd also be setting that up. We'd be setting up the transponder. We'd be setting up the altimeter. Uh, another thing worth checking, of course, is uh, to make sure your trim is in the correct position. I appreciate the fact that you have like a little thing like that, so you can see it very clearly. If I press up, you can see the trim thing goes up. If I press down, you can see it goes down. Obviously, you want to make sure that's set correctly. Also, I love how the wing flaps have a takeoff position too, so you can just tap the wing flaps and get them to the correct position with a quick glance. All right, we've got everything going. We are ready to roll. This would be a good time to go ahead and kick on the uh, landing light, or the taxi lights, I should say, if you think you need them. I'm not worried about them today. Like I said, oh, we've got basically no wind. One of the things with the Moonies that you cannot see from here, other than it feels like it's kind of a small plane, is it is an incredibly small plane. Like I was joking a little bit earlier, you are sitting six inches off the ground with your butt with this thing. It is so, 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 so tiny. You know, when you're flying these things, yeah, they're great performance, and they get good gas mileage and everything like that out of the sun. But oh my gosh, uh, when you try one of these out yourself, you're like, ooh, I don't think I can get back out of it. And um, I feel really bad for the people in the back seat because um, I think if you chop them up small enough, you might just be able to get them back there. All righty, let's go ahead and line ourselves up. I'm going to go ahead and kick myself over here into the wind. They love it when you do this at Tower Airports because it's like, please don't hold up the works. I'm like, I can't help. 
it, I have a propeller in the front. I can't do anything about it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do our quick little uh, run up to make sure everything is all set. Uh, this one's uh, pretty easy to run. Again, you don't have to do anything excessive on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our throttle. We're going to make sure we pop our parking brake on first. We're going to come right up to 1,000, 2000 revolutions per minute. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. There we go. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're using a lot of heat when we do this. So close enough. Oh, don't, don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and play with our magnetos. Let's go ahead and click this to the left real quick. We're just going to make sure we'll see what it does. Wow, that is the world's best magneto. I am super impressed. That's like even better than X-Men. We'll switch this to right. It should have about the same drop. Yeah, they're almost exactly the same. So these must have been, uh, these are very, 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 very fresh magnetos because there's like barely any drop on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the propeller some exercise. This is going to be 29. We don't have to go. Uh, when we do this, by the way, something you want to look out for is if you look over at your oil pressure gauge, this should go up. Interesting. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, we'll make sure everything's all set. And what we do is we're just going to pull the throttle back and see if the engine cuts out on us. It should not. If it does, like I said, I'd be a little bit nervous. But these are very nice fuel-injected, not a pretty engine, so they work great. All right, that system is all set. That is uh, nice and running. Uh, everything else is good. Altimeter, make sure that's all set. Transponder is set on. Uh, strobe lights on. This is always a nice thing to do uh, when you take off. So we've got that. We also have the recog light we can do. Again, that's just a great way to kind of let everybody know that you're taking off. And let's go ahead and do it. Normally, of course, you'd want to get air traffic control and everything under the sun, but eh, one of these days I'll make a, a realistic flight video and you'll see exactly what we do in the whole world. Like I said, I think it works for you. All right, come swinging around. Now, the big thing with this plane is it's only as much horsepower, believe it or not, as a Cherokee. So it's not ridiculously overpowered, but it is constant speed, so it does have a personality. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the throttle all the way up to 2,000 RPM. That's probably something you're familiar with. We just want to make sure everything's in the green before we let go. That looks pretty good. We're going to release the brake, and we're going to smoothly push up all the way. Get that nice little surge from the propeller. Surge! And then we start ripping down the runway. Looking at about 60 knots to start lifting the nose up a little bit. Again, this is not a ridiculously high-performing plane until you get airborne. Then all of a sudden you start to realize, oh... All right, a nice little tug. And it just kind of comes up on its own. Well, that was amusing. <laughs> Turns out if you have the window open, uh, the aircraft self-destructs. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a Mooney only thing. It uh, only exists in uh, this particular variation of the Mooney. So uh, make sure you close your windows before takeoff, otherwise uh, destruction will follow. So <laughs> that was interesting. So again, uh, it's just, just one of those uh, things that when they dial in numbers and little ages and stuff like that, and they're like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. You just have to keep in mind that stuff like that can happen sometimes. Now in the real world, of course, I've had windows open on me more times than I care to admit. And yes, uh, the last thing you want to be doing is fiddling with your avionics uh, when you're trying to get the aircraft safely into the air. Just kind of uh, one of those things you want to be mindful of. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the landing gear out of the way. And let's get our flaps out of the way too. Now that we've got enough room. Now, this is not the most high performance as far as a climb goes. It will definitely get you going. It will definitely get you going up in the air smoothly. But don't think that you're going to, you know, 300 horsepower bonanza out of here or something like that. The Mooney just isn't like that. It is definitely a fast plane. It is definitely a good performance plane. But it's not, you know, it's not a panacea in that sense. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to execute a nice gentle turn on the good old-fashioned Route 84 part below us, I think. Actually, it might not be that one. i got to remember which one that is, but that's okay. So for climb out speed, 100 knots seems to be kind of the sweet spot here. It's going to be a good combination of keeping things cool at the same time as not worrying too, too much about a lot of the other details. Uh, with this particular aircraft, uh, we are authorized to do what they call a cruise climb, where we're going to intentionally reduce our power for the purposes of, you know, reducing wear and tear and everything along those lines for us. So to do that, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our throttle and we're going to pull back until our manifold pressure reaches 24. There's 24. Uh, by the way, we're looking at that instrument 
right there in case you're curious. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to pull our RPM panel back until we get 2,400. Uh, fans of the Cessna 182 will probably recognize that combination pretty clearly. There it goes, right a little too far. Ah, uh, the propeller gauge is just like it is on a real plane. You never quite get it exact. You know, you always see it like in flight sim. Well, look at that, I got it exactly 2,500. Uh, bad news, folks, it's really tough to get it to stick exactly at the number you want it to be at. And it's one of those things, if you start fitzing with it, you're going to be distracted by that and not, you know, doing things like flying the plane safely. So we'll kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So as far as our climb out goes, very simple. Uh, once we've reduced our power a tiny bit here, again, we're doing 24 and 24. That's going to uh, save us a lot of wear and tear on this plane and allow us to kind of climb pretty smoothly. Now, depending on what kind of distance climb you're going to be doing is going to dictate exactly uh, how high you're going to take this plane up to. Uh, right now, if I go ahead and pitch this thing all the way up for our VY speed, uh, the VY speed on this plane is, I believe, 104, 105. Yeah, it's right about there. That's going to get us, uh, what do we got there? It's about 1,100 feet per minute. So doing the division real quick, obviously, if you're going up to 10 grand, it's probably going to take about 15 minutes because you are going to start losing performance as we get higher. Keep in mind, though, we are at a reduced power climb. So despite that reduction in power, we're still getting a fairly decent climb right here. It's starting to sink a little bit because I'll let the nose come down. But that's not too, too bad like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop up to 2,500 feet. We're going to go ahead and stick that lovely nose down and let the aircraft build up speed. Now, this is one of those things that once this aircraft gets going, it goes. So you have to kind of give it some time to kind of build up all that energy that it's going to need for the purposes of this flight. It is a fast plane. You just have to be patient with it. It gets there eventually. Again, this ain't no P-51, but it will certainly get you there. There we go. Let's take a look over at the speed. The GPS says we're doing 145, so that's not exactly slow. Let the nose come down just a tiny bit there. And again, we're not exactly at full power either. There we go. A couple more taps of trim, and we'll go ahead and activate the automatic pilot. So this is a pretty traditional automatic pilot. We're going to engage it there. We're going to press an ALT. There is no altitude warning except for the fact that you have this lovely, lovely thing right here. This autopilot, as on its own, this is a KFC 150, normally would not have this. But we actually have one of these, which makes it a little bit easier for us. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to engage the navigational hold mode. What that's going to do is it's going to line us back up with this little magenta line of safety. Now, let's say we wanted to make an altitude change to this aircraft. Now, what I could do is I could come over here. I could go ahead and I roll my mouse up to 3000 and I can go ahead and press the arm button. Now, when you press that, you're basically saying, okay, we're ready. What do you want to do now? So now all you have to do is tell it exactly how you want to go up. So if I now press the vertical speed hold mode on this, what it's going to do is it's going to start making our aircraft actually climb upwards. You can see we're getting about 500 feet per minute. Well, one thing we can do here is we can actually adjust our pitch reference if we need to, depending on what we're achieving. But since we've armed this, see how it says uh, altitude capture? Uh, once we get up to our 3,000 feet, it's going to go ahead and lock onto that sucker so that we actually have the ability to do it. Now, if we want to dial in a different vertical speed, we simply click on this button right here, and then it says our vertical speed. Let's say, for example, I want to do 1,000 feet per minute. Now I can push in on that knob again and go ahead and set it back to its normal mode, and you can see that we're going to start increasing our vertical speed. Like in the real plane, however, it's going to take a minute to actually capture that vertical speed. Also, since we have altitude arm on, once we hit that 3,000 feet, the aircraft is going to level off anyway, and it's going to reduce our vertical speed to get us a little bit closer to it. Because this is a relatively small plane in the real world, the control forces aren't ridiculous, which is kind of nice. On you know, If you did want to hand fly this one, nothing is unusually strong, nothing is unusually heavy. It's actually a pretty stable, pretty reliable plane as far as a lot of that goes. And you don't have a lot of that regional variation, as I like to kind of call it, sort of a thing like that. Once we are, have gone ahead and set ourselves up at the correct altitude that we want to, we can start thinking a little bit about what we're going to do with our power settings for our cruise here. Now, there's a lot of different options, and we're very, very low here. Here. Generally, between 13 and 15 gallons per hour is considered just about right. Uh, 25 and 23 is a pretty easy one to use. Uh, it's going to be a little bit noisy for us if we want to do like a 2400 RPM like we have now and do something like, uh, let's say, 23 or 22 inches. Uh, that's going to get us a pretty good amount of power. Now, the rule states that we're allowed to actually go ahead and lean the mixture so that we're 150 rich of peak. Uh, you're probably sitting there going, what? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce my power just a tiny bit here to go ahead and uh, create that so that you can see exactly what I mean by that. So we have our exhaust gas temperature right here. That's going to be this instrument right now. It's about 1342. <laughs> Notice how absolutely hopeless it is to try to get that number even. Welcome to the real world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the little red handle here. 
and you're going to watch my exhaust gas temperature start to come up, and you're going to watch my fuel flow start to come down. The goal here is to reduce the fuel flow. That's why you're taking the time to lean it. So you're going to hit a point where it's going to start getting really, 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 really high. Ready, set, it's going to, yeah, there it is. So it's not going any higher than 1,472. So we're allowed to go 50 degrees rich of this, which would be 72 minus 50, which is going to get us down to 1,422. Right there, just about there. So this is now an appropriately lean mixture. I'm looking over my fuel flow now, and I can see that I'm doing about 14.1 gallons per hour, which is just about perfect. Again, our RPM is a little high, which is one of the reasons why we're burning just a tiny bit more fuel. But you can see, that's actually not bad. Now, one thing we want to think about too now is, of course, switching our tanks. Now, we're sucking all the gas out of the left-hand side. Again, we got 45 gallons, 48 on that side. So as we're running it down, we have to make sure we do it every, usually about every 30 minutes. I used to use the hands on the clock, and uh, one thing that we have on a lot of GPSs is it'll actually a little light will come on and say, hey, you got a message, you click message, and it says, oh, you're supposed to be changing a fuel tank right now. It's like, oh. Oh, thank you. That's pretty helpful. I appreciate that. So now what we're going to do is we'll fast forward a little bit to uh, when we get ready for our landing and our approach. All right. Just about getting to our destination. So right off my right here, you can see we've got ourselves a lovely airport, a Bridgeport, for those of you interested in following along. Pretty nice little airport. Uh, the runway we're actually interested in using today is actually that one right there. As you can probably see, we're not really at a good angle for it. So what we're going to do is actually take a right turn to 45 for the left downwind for runway 6. Boy! So this aircraft is a little tricky to land. And if you're wondering, well, it can't be that bad. I mean, isn't it just a lightweight whatever? Remember I told you this plane is fast, but it's not powerful? Well, the problem with that is that means we're tremendously aerodynamic. And because we're so aerodynamic, that makes it very, very, very challenging to try to stick the thing on the ground where you want to put it. And uh, you'll see exactly what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and pull into my downwind. Uh, when we come into downwind, you always want to go ahead and get this uh, gear down for you. That's going to stop a lot of those alarms in your ears as well. And the other thing you want to start doing is getting yourself down to about, let's call about 90 knots or so. Hold that nose up a little bit. Uh, we're going to come a little bit to the right here. It's going to take just a minute to start slowing down. There it goes. Delightful. So we have ourselves in our little left downwind. We have the runway right off our left here. We're going to pull the throttle back. We're going to pop those flaps in. The problem with this airplane is it does not want to stop. So uh, one thing I'll actually do is pop in that second notch of flaps really, really early in a desperate attempt to try to get the speed of this thing somewhat under control during our approach here. It is very, very, very tricky to land. As far as checklists go, uh, one thing you want to think about is do you have your fuel pump on? Do you have your landing light on? Do you need your landing light? Do you get your appropriate clearances? All those are the usual things we're going to be doing, and I'm actually going to pop down that last notch of flaps right away. And so we can get this thing nice and slow. You're looking for a final approach speed of, I like to use 70 knots. Go ahead and I'll pull them to use. I'll create a little bit of extra drag in this turn here. Give me just a little extra drag. There's the drag I want. Nice. Now you can see we're doing about 80 knots. I've got my throttle all the way to zero and we're not slowing down. Now this aircraft approach is now going around. I'm actually going to back up just a tiny bit here. Pull that nose up. This aircraft does not slow down going to do is we're going to try to get right on that 70 knots. I'm already too fast. Notice my throttle is at zero and I'm still coming in fine. Throttle's at zero. We're going to lift the nose up. Notice how much this plane flares. And now we're down. And that's it. So in that particular case, uh, what I would have done is gone around because I know trying to get this plane at the ground with 10 knots too much means you're going to overshoot the runway. If you probably took a look behind me, you know, I'm pretty good at putting this thing where I want it to. That was a thousand foot marker before I was able to get the plane all the way down onto the ground. So that gives you an idea of just how floaty this plane really, really is in the real world, as well as it is in the simulator. So hopefully this video was interesting to you. Like I said, I'm just trying to keep it simple. This is a really, really nice plane as far as uh, small single engine planes for those of you who are looking for something that's a little bit faster without being excessive. But uh, be careful with that landing. It is definitely unique and it is not the same as many other planes just like it. Other than that, enjoy.